I wish I snuck food into going to see this. This movie has one of the best looking cheeseburgers I've seen on film in a while. That should tell you right away, I kinda love this movie. The menu is more or less a bottle film about this wealthy group of foodies, food critics, celebrities, tech gurus, and more who have assembled on an island for an intimate dinner from celebrity chef Ray Fiennes. But the more the movie goes on, the more it's like they got themselves an expensive ticket for a dinner theater production of Midsummer. The movie is advertised like a horror film, and there's certainly a lot of levels of suspense in it, but it is extremely funny. It hardcore works as a dark satirical comedy, and I genuinely laughed my ass off several times in it. It's one of the funniest comedies of the year, and it knows it is. It isn't unintentionally funny or anything like that. The movie starts out like an episode of Frasier, where they get into an exclusive dinner party, only Frasier can't make it, so Niles takes Roz instead. And then the episode just gets darker as it goes along. The staff here will throw you off your guard too. Like they'll be sinister and weird, but also kind of have a sense of humor. All of the actors play their types so well. They're pompous and full of shit, but they don't cross over into being unlikable or that you hate seeing them. You'll have the food critics where one will just repeat what the other person said, as if they thought of it as well. Nicholas Holt is incredibly good in this, as a guy who just geeks out about this chef. I love when people start dying or getting injured, and this guy still thinks it's part of the show, and is like, oh my god, do you think the chef hates me? Anya Taylor-Joy is very funny here, and I love seeing her in a role like this, where she's more or less the comedic straight man who isn't into any of this, and she can get laughs just from her double takes and reactions alone. The dialogue between all of the characters is perfect, and Ray Fiennes of course just commands the screen when he's there, as a character like this should. This chef's a dude who all of his passion has been drained from him because of these characters. And he just makes a fool out of them without them realizing it. He serves them dips at one point without the bread, and they're still talking about him being a genius. He finds this balance between being polite to them and also crazy, like Hannibal Lecter opened a restaurant, and he's also like a cult leader on top of that. John Leguizamo plays an actor in the film, and I love that the chef hates him because he went to see a terrible movie that he starred in years ago. And the whole time this was brought up, I was just picturing in my head that this chef went to go see The Pest on his day off. It's a very unpredictable film. From the trailer, I was wondering, okay, is it going to be some most dangerous game type situation? And no, it keeps you on your feet. I had no idea how this was going to turn out. That said, the ending of the film is just okay. I'll give it this, it's an original ending, it doesn't cop out by going all climaxy or generic. But what they do at the end, I'm not gonna give it away of course, but I didn't fully buy that this many people would just let this happen. I didn't hate the ending, there's still some good gags there, but it is what brought it down from an A to an A- minus for me. I still highly recommend seeing this. But after being away last weekend and then a couple of days of being sick, I did finally get a chance to see Black Panther Wakanda Forever, so I can officially say that yes, it is better than the movies I watched when I was sick. Those being Krampus The Return and R.I.P.D. 2 Rise of the Damned. I saw this movie at a mid-afternoon show yesterday, where it was on one of the smallest screens in the building, and the sound was kinda low, so it was hard to hear the dialogue at times. And even with that, I still had a good time. Understandably, it's a very mature film. It's respectful and emotional, especially the opening and closing, and most importantly, it has a tone and sticks with it. When it needs to be serious, it goes all out, and when it's a lighter moment, they're in the scenes where that's fine. You feel the weight of the drama because the actors, especially Angela Bassett, are acting their asses off. 
and they really drive home what the characters are dealing with, such as a crisis of faith or trouble moving on. So sure, it does have its seriousness, but it is still an entertaining movie. We got this opening where people are digging for vibranium, and it almost starts like a monster movie, where a ship is attacked by something in the waters, then this sonar weapon hypnotizes people into killing themselves, like it's Shyamalan directing a Marvel movie. And it was cool to see Robert John Burke and Lake Bell in the opening. They're not in it much, but it was cool to see them. The conflict in the film is between Wakanda and King Namor. And this character is just excellent. He is charismatic as hell, but can also be intimidating at the drop of a hat. There's parts where he seems reasonable, but then kind of an asshole, but they do a great job of really humanizing this character too. I will say this, I did feel the length of the movie, and I was getting antsy at times. It really is an ensemble film, and for the most part that works, because so many characters have their chance to shine, but sometimes it can feel too crowded. You don't really know a whole lot about Ironheart here, which sadly makes her feel less like a fleshed out character, so they just make her kind of obnoxious at times. I enjoyed the movie a lot without it really ever crossing over into me loving it, but it was a nice film with good action, solid drama, and never felt exploitive. It's a B plus, but you probably should see it on a bigger screen than I did. Thanks for watching everyone, and we got the Cinema Snobs 1960 in film coming soon, so we'll see you then.